thanks for having me at this symposium. Uh, I was asked to come and introduce uh, the whole topic and to share a little bit of our brief experience at Cedars. We were the first uh, clinical site to actually use the system. We've been using it now for several months and have uh, acquired several hundred cases of experience. Uh, but my job is really to introduce the whole uh, idea about angio-based uh, physiology systems and to explain exactly how it's done. So uh, without any further ado, I'm going to get going here. And then uh, my clock will start ticking. So all right. Um, Here's my disclosures. I'm going to start off just with a teaser of a 45-year-old woman who had an anterior MI, uh, multiple uh, angioplasties done on the year that she had her infarct with a large anterior uh, ischemia and an ejection fraction, now a cardiomyopathy. Uh, and she came to us with a new onset of chest discomfort. And uh, it's a little hard to see there. I had to get this from the scanned record. But you can see she has a, a significant amount of what looks to be a reversible ischemia despite her cardiomyopathy and low ejection fraction. And so she was referred for coronary angiography, and here is her LED, which uh, certainly doesn't look too terrible, but if you uh, look in the mid portion of the LED, you see where her stent is. She has some instant restenosis and a hazy spot there. And I think any of us would uh, be hard pressed to say that this is uh, something we have to fix, uh, but based on her clinical presentation, uh, it's suspicious. And so uh, I think probably doing a uh, physiology study in this area is warranted. And I'm going to leave it at that and come back to that case uh, at the end. So I think we, we all probably in this room agree that uh, fractional flow reserve and uh, coronary investigation of coronary physiology is well established for the diagnosis of ischemia. Uh, we know there are good outcomes and reduced costs associated with uh, using physiology. Uh, however, it's still underutilized. We're going to talk about that some more. Um, FFR angio is a, a novel method of performing FFR without uh, using a wire, perhaps uh, broadening its clinical uh, use and helping with decision making with patients. So let's just uh, review some stuff that uh, perhaps is a little um, uh, basic, but I wanted to uh, lay out the case for coronary physiology. We know based on the FAME study about these dramatic reductions in events uh, and stents used per patients and an overall cost. Uh, we have my colleague here to the right to thank for this uh, landmark study, which really uh, put the nail in the coffin of using angio-based uh, visual assessment for deciding whether or not to perform a PCI. Uh, FAME was uh, very impressive. It's reduction in MACE and death in MI and revascularization uh, compared to angio-based uh, assessment. And in two-year follow-up, uh, there's no question uh, that we had a significant reduction uh, in overall MACE. Uh, it wasn't just in FAME 1 and FAME 2 when we did a randomized clinical study looking at single uh, or multivessel stable coronary disease that if you used FFR together to guide your angioplasty rather than angiographic assessment, uh, patients did dramatically better. This uh, trial was uh, so positive that it was actually uh, discontinued early. And uh, we had the unicorn from FAME, which is that uh, the ability to increase quality and to lower costs. That's something you don't see in medicine very often. It's very easy to, uh, I shouldn't say it's easy, but it's easier to improve quality and spend money. And it's certainly easy to save money and lower quality. But to do this and to get that bottom right-hand quadrant is a very rare thing. And it's something that I think we should all be proud of when we do physiologic assessment of our patients. Uh, what about after angioplasty? We don't talk about this as much, but I think this is a real new frontier in physiology to be able to use physiology after an angioplasty and to recognize that we leave ischemia quite a, a significant amount of time and patients don't do well when that happens. Uh, I think we saw this uh, most recently in the DEFINE PCI trial in which uh, we realized that the rationale for this study was uh, 20 to 35 percent of patients having residual ischemia based on uh, other previous studies. And what they did in DEFINE PCI is they did a uh, pullback, a physiology wire-based pullback after the end of the procedure to see how often residual ischemia was still there. And it turns out that uh, a full quarter of the time uh, in this particular trial, the IFR was still under 0 0.89, suggesting there was uh, still not a complete relief of ischemia, despite the doctor saying, I'm done, I've got a great result, uh, this stent uh, has completely relieved the obstruction, I've, I'm finished, and then uh, the uh, disappointing results there, so one in four patients still having uh, ischemia at the end of the case. <laughs> And it turns out, when you look a little bit deeper at that study, it turns out that it was not diffuse disease, as I would have expected. I was really surprised by these results. It was about 80% of the patients had focal disease. It was either right inside the stent, just after, just before the stent. It was mostly either geographic miss 
or it was poor stent expansion. It was easily fixable ischemia. So the point here being that, uh, yes, we should be using physiology to guide our PCI, but we should also think about using it right after we're done to confirm that we've done a good job. And this really plays well into the idea of having an angio-based system, something easy uh, to go ahead and recheck. What about using physiology in order to identify whether we have single, double, or triple vessel disease? I think I don't want to beat a dead horse. This has been well established in the literature that if you use physiology, you can often downgrade patients that you thought had triple vessel disease might need to go to surgery uh, to either single or double vessel disease. And again, uh, this has been shown by many investigators. So we know that FFR uh, is supported by guidelines uh, worldwide, uh, not just uh, you know here in America, but also uh, um, in other centers around the world. Uh, in the ACC, of course, it's been well established for the uh, patients who have um, uh, significant either left main or non left main disease um, with uh, positive physiology to go ahead and revascularize them. It's also true in the ESC; they're even a little bit more. Um, you know, pushy than we are here in America, saying that you really need to have documented ischemia of less than 0 0.8. Uh, and if you have that, it's absolutely indicated to go ahead and proceed and do your PCI. Uh, however, despite all this clinical data, despite all these recommendations uh, around the world, we still see physiology is underutilized. And uh, this is a great sadness, I think, to all of us in, in the uh, room who have uh, struggled for years to spread the good gospel about uh, physiology-guided PCI. And the question still remains, why is this happening? Why is it underutilized? I think there are many reasons. Well, of course, uh, there's time involved. People don't want to spend the time. Uh, there is some risk in putting a wire down. Of course, there's some cost in giving adenosine. Um, and uh, if you have multiple vessels, then you just kind of multiply the time involved. And so despite uh, the known benefits, it's still only used in about 20% of patients uh, and much less than that uh, outside the US. Uh, well, here's this possible solution, which is uh, FFR angio. Uh, and we're gonna talk a lot about this uh, as the talks go on. So I'm not gonna belabor exactly um, how, it's, how it's done, but I wanna show you some of the science behind it. Um, so when you look at the difference between FFR angio and the invasive physiology assessments that we're all used to, um, you can see some significant differences. So uh, obviously they all give you an FFR or an IFR measurement. Uh, however, CathWorks uh, doesn't require a wire, obviously, so it's non-invasive. Uh, you do get a full 3D reconstruction of the coronary tree, and uh, therefore you can interrogate any vessel you want after the initial analysis, the initial work has been done. So let's talk a little bit uh, more about that. How does it work? First, you take your angiogram, and uh, all these systems are really garbage in, garbage out. You need a good quality static angiogram in order to do the best assessment. The better your quality of your study is going to be, the better your outcome is going to be. A 3D model is, is performed, uh, a bunch of uh, mathematical computation is done, and the coronary flow is then uh, established. And so this, uh, again, 3D reconstruction is done through your regular angiograms. We ask for three views. Uh, the stenosis assessment is done automatically through QCA edge detection uh, algorithms. And then again, this resistance model is used to change that stenosis to a resistor. And then finally, uh, uh, you can calculate the FFR uh, this way. So uh, this works with all integrated uh, angiography systems. Uh, there is reimbursement for it, and it does improve uh, quality of care through our uh, classic, you know, typical goals. So uh, getting back to this patient, I showed you uh, the LED. Again, not a very impressive stenosis there. Uh, here's a few more views. Uh, in no view did we appear to have a particularly tight stenosis. Uh, at best, it was a 40, uh, 40 or so percent lesion. So uh, despite this relatively modest narrowing, uh, this is what the CathWorks uh, screen looks like at the end of the case where you can see the, um, the QCA there and, and actually no, no lesion uh, percentage greater than about 40%. And uh, you can see the FFR was calculated 0 0.78. On the right there at the bottom, you see a, a stenosis map, which shows you uh, the contour of the vessel all along. And on the bottom left, you can see a color coding of the drop in pressure uh, from white to red. And uh, you'll see that here a little bit better where you can click on the vessel, you can move it with your finger around in a 3D orientation. We'll see more examples of that in real time. And uh, the white dot at the end of the coronary tree there uh, over here shows you the drop in FFR at any one point. This is a really strong uh, benefit of this technology in that it really co-registers 
it, it gives you the point of physiology at any point along the vessel. And you can move your, your uh, cursor up and down. Here's a, another example of uh, the cursor being halfway up, showing the FFR hasn't changed. The color change happens just at that one spot where you had that haziness. And uh, the distal part of the artery, there's no further drop in pressure. Uh, this patient had a wire-based uh, assessment done. We were in our evaluation phase, encouraged to validate uh, all of these, uh, these tracings that we got. And we got a, a very, very similar uh, abnormal result. Uh, but here with this beautiful pullback curve showing that, again, the pressure loss occurred only in that one spot in, in the middle of the instant restenosis. So I'm going to finish up here with just another quick case, very similar, 70-year-old guy, uh, now new onset uh, discomfort, uh, showing a significant amount of LED ischemia, a CT coronary angiogram showing a really nasty uh, mid-LED lesion, which in fact was the culprit lesion, why the guy had to come to the lab, but also having a moderate right coronary artery lesion. And here you see, I think, the kind of a moderate disease that we see all the time in the cath lab here with multiple views. Should we fix this? Should we not? Uh, very straightforward to go ahead in a non-culprit vessel and uh, do an uh, angio-based assessment. Uh, here you see uh, a very borderline result, a 0.89. And I think whenever new technology comes out and you get around the cup point, uh, you say to yourself, you know, what should I do? But here, 0.89 is very negative. You know, so we don't need to worry uh, so much about this. Okay, so back to the conclusion slide. Will image-based FFR <laughs> uh, reduce the use of wire-based? I don't think that's the right question. I think the answer is, will it expand the use of physiologic guidance? And uh, again, there are some advantages of a non-wire-based system which might help expand the use of physiology. First of all, it eliminates risk associated with conventional wire-based, uh, especially with adenosine utilization. Uh, there is good correlation with wire-based systems, uh, even around the uh, cut point. And more importantly, I think there will be a group of physicians who have been resistant to using wires who will find this uh, extremely attractive. So uh, I thank you for your attention. We're going to be moving on and then hearing some really great case examples as well as some review of the literature. Thanks.